very good morning ladies and gentlemen boys and girls can we give a huge round of applause for yourself come on people you students deserve more round of applause i hope this is not enough for you guys come on thank you thank you thank you so much in this great lovely day i would like to uh, thank viranda ias uh, who presents oyaram thodu an interactive event for the civil service aspirants powered by the hindu can you give them a round of applause ladies and gentlemen boys and girls this event a joint initiative by the viranda ias and the hindu will witness talks by experts including officials of the all hindu services and group a services and on how to emerge successful in the civil services examination conducted by the union public services commission upsc and the event aims to recognize the district level toppers of west the final 150 students who will be part of india's first holistic residential program academy for civil services aspirants acsa will be announced later and i take this immense pleasure to invite our dignitaries onto the stage ladies and gentlemen please join your hands together and welcome mr aloysius xavier lopez special correspondent the hindu so please welcome onto the stage ladies and gentlemen can we give a big round of applause thank you, thank you. and i take this privilege to introduce dr n k sindamare kannan ips former additional tamil nadu dgp government of tamil nadu can we give him a round of applause and welcome him on to this stage he is a former civil servant and economist with border experience as an indian police service ips officer and held several senior positions with the government of tamil nadu across the state a strategic maintaining the law and order criminology counter intelligence anti insurgency cyber crime recovery and recruitment of police personnel across the state the contributions were widely acknowledged and honored both by the central and state government and received various opportunities to lead the most complicated and sensitive assignments of the state he is a philanthropic in nature with a long public service and currently supporting various voluntary agencies initiatives on inspiring youth and various other causes thank you so much for coming sir ladies and gentlemen can we give a round of applause once again please and i take this privilege to introduce mr yu sagayam ias we are volunteer retired so please welcome on to the stage ladies and gentlemen can we give a round of applause for him mr yu yu sagayam ias is a well known indian civil servant recognized for his integrity honesty and commitment to public service he was born in 1962 in tamil nadu india and completed his education in law before joining the indian administrative service in law and zero tolerance approach to corruption he was held in several important positions in the tamil nadu government including serving as a commissioner of hindu religious and charitable endowments as the managing director of the tn small industries development corporation he is a shining example of a civil servant committed to uploading the rule of the law and serving the public interest he his integrity courage and dedication have earned him in respect and he continues to inspire others to follow his footsteps can we give him a round of applause please thank you so much sir and now it's my pleasure to invite dr stanley johnny international affairs editor of the hindu so please welcome to the stage ladies and gentlemen join your hands together and welcome stanley johnny who is the international affairs editor with the hindu a phd in international studies from the center for west asian studies jnu del new delhi he anchors the papers international courage besides the writing editor editorials opens and other features he has been writing and geopolitics and india foreign policy for over a decade and he has reported from government parts of the world he is an adjunct faculty member of at asian college of journalism chennai a visiting fellow at kerala university 
Tiruvananthapuram, a member of the Board of Studies of the Center for Sociology and Research, St. Teresa's College, Ernakulam, and a member of the 10-member Australia-India Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative Partnership, AIIPOIP Task Force. Thank you so much, sir. Can we give him a round of applause once again? And I take this immense pleasure to welcome Mr. V. Nandakumar, IRS, Additional Commissioner of Income Tax Department of Revenue, Ministry of Finance, Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give him a big round of applause and welcome him on to this stage. Mr. V. Nandakumar, IRS, Additional Commissioner of Income Tax Department of Revenue, Ministry of Finance, Government of India. He is a graduation from Dr. Ambedkar Government Art College, Vyasarpadi. He trained as served as Deputy Registrar for Cooperative Societies, Assistant Director, Rural Development, Collected Training, and got selected to Indian Revenue Service for the, in the year 2005. He worked in income tax in various capacities as Assistant Commissioner, Director, Assistant Commissioner, uh, Director, uh, Commissioner, Director Private Secretary to Union Minister of India. He has been chosen as top 20 youth icon of India by India Today and he has been awarded as best auditor of the year 2019 and he has got National Faceless Assessment Project team member in 2021. Thank you so much for your wonderful efforts. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give him a big round of applause? So ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for the panel discussion. I would like to uh, request Mr. Aloysius Xavier Lopez, Special Correspondent the Hindu, to take over the stage. Thank you. Good morning and greetings to you all. At this session on why civil services is the key to modern Indian aspirations, we have here with us four intellectuals. Former IAS officer, Mr. U. Sagayam, IPS officer Sandamarai Kannan, IRS officer Nanda Kumar, and the Hindu's international affairs editor Stanley Johnny. This session would cover three aspects. First, focusing on civil services as a career. Second, on how to prepare for the civil services examination. Thirdly, on emerging trends. The notification for civil services preliminary examination 2023 mentions about 21 different posts, such as Indian Administrative Service, Indian Police Service, Indian Revenue Service. The question I want to pose to uh, IRS officer Nanda Kumar, sir, is please tell us about the key aspects of all India services and Group A services, particularly the role played by officials in some of these key services and their responsibilities. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ah, yeah. Good morning, soldiers. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Mr. Aloysius' question, All India Service. In a, many people have, what is All India Service? They are having a broad perception, but they don't have a right perception. Why do, why do they call All India Service? It's a reason because you are manned by the Union Ministry and posted to a particular state, like uh, Indian Administrative Service, IAS, IPS, and uh, Indian Forest Service. Forest Service is not a civil service. You know, you don't, you don't deal with the civil servants or civilians actually. So, Makkal order deal pandra da civil servants and Makkal related under service. So, since forest service, it's not part of the, the, the civilians, it's only manning the, the forests and animals, it is not controlled by civil servants. So, there are three all India service IAS, IPS, and uh, IAS, Indian Forest Service. The rest other services are controlled to the Indian civil servants, again, central, central services. Central service is again two categories. One, the technical, the other is non technical. The technical services are grouped together and called it as again central, central services. In that, um, very important, uh, predominantly the Indian, Indian foreign service. That's one premier service everyone uh, prefers to aspire next to IIM or IPS. And even someone has even a first choice because when I aspired for UPIC, my first option was IFS. I didn't opt IIM and IPS. So my first option, second option was Indian Revenue Service. The Indian Revenue Service, people have, again, the Revenue Service, they think the Revenue Service, it's not uh, the, uh, the, the people think it's only uh, the, uh, the, uh, the income tax or uh, the GST, because there are two different services in revenue. One, the direct taxes. Direct tax, again, Indian Revenue Service, income tax and the corporate tax. The second one is uh, indirect taxes, that is nothing but the GST. 
Now we have integrated uh, the service tax, customs, and XYZ. So all these three are integrated into GSC service. And the next is all about it, even Anushes, when he was down, he was uh, highlight, highlighting about Indian corporate customs. So one of my students uh, who turned to be now an officer in Indian corporate uh, corporate service, he is manning the, he is under the Ministry of Corporate Office because every service has its own department, union government or rural department. That department will govern all those kind of people. Suppose I am an Indian government service, I mean, I mean, I mean controlled or rather I managed by the Central Board of Directors, CGDT. And again, even for the customs excite and, uh, and the service tax again, so, uh, and the Indian Central Board of Indirect Taxes. So, these boards are governing the people across India. So that is why, though we are called uh, the central service, we are exclusively controlled by the Indian government. And each and every service, people doesn't know. They all only aspire for uh, IIT, IPS, and they have a popular aspiration. Like that. But remember, there are services like Indian Defense Estates and the uh, Ordnance Factory Service. So Defense Estates, if you see in your uh, OT and the officer saying like that, and the OT or even in RBD, RBD people do not know it's Armed Vehicle Ammunition Depot of India. The RBD entire estate, Defense Estates, I mean, it's all manned by Defense Estates officer. He is more powerful because he has all the protocol and 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 the more powerful on position. People directed the area of India at different estates out there. Ordnance factories, is all the different factories across India manned by ordnance factory service. IOFS. So in the matter, there are different types. Previously, now railway, Indian railway management service have been integrated. But previously, railway accounts, railway personnel, railway traffic, are being there are services there. And even in accounts, also people do not know that they, there are civil accounts, audited accounts, defense accounts, railway accounts. So they are there. these accounts are all categorized and uh, you know the civil accounts people man the entire one one. One deputy director or a joint director in the civil accounts will man the entire Tamil Nadu and what the function he will be controlling. So people do not aspire that they do not know that these people are instrumental in the part of the civil administration. So the central civil service are different category. As I said, there are exclusive departments, union government. We are managing how many are control for that. That is why it's called central civil services. All India servants though, like IAS, uh, Ministry of DOPT, Department of Personal and Training. They are the, the current controlling authority in the sense again they man the people. But since they are posted to the, the specific state, and the cardinal, in the ending, the cardinal you choose for the and the cardinal, um be rank, um be a community, and the posting, you'll get posted to a particular state. Till the time of your retirement, uh, you will be working for that particular specific rank. And uh, uh, Mr. Sagan sir is there and also Sendamai Kanan sir is there to both to talk about uh, IAs and IPs. So with us, I said central civil service is again predominantly there are and the 21 then uh, IAS no IP IPS are everything now. Remaining 19 or central civil service you will be exclusively manned by the union government under the exclusive department. There are they will be they they will be part of the department in a macro administration. This is all about uh, Aloysius. That they introduced this system of Indian civil service basically to administer, account, and run the affairs of the East India Company. Slowly, they occupied territories of Bengal, Orissa, and other areas. It's all all history. I am just quoting it that this, this Indian civil service gave the basic infrastructure for forming a such a UPSC type of system because as Vallabhai Patel said that this is the backbone of the country so getting into this service is not easy and it is not as like other services out of the three lakh contestants who are going to apply or more than three lakhs thousand two fifty five vacancies are arised and getting into this thousand two fifty post itself is a greatest achievement Leave alone whether you get what post is not important. Getting into civil service itself is the greatest achievement for any individual. Every department has got its own positive and negative points. Every department, so Comptroller Auditor General of India, you take Indian Information Service, you take uh, CRPF, you take Railways Management, 
every post has got its own distinctive individuality and importance in the running of the government. But of all, the Indian Administrative Service and the Indian Police Service are like two tracks which maintain the balance of the state and the center. It is also a preventive mechanism for maintenance of law and order, crime, looking at the welfare of the people, to ensure there's a communal harmony, to maintain the, what you call the, uh, the base, to maintain the peace in the country, these two internal administrative setup is very important. And that is why this requires a very, very tough officers. It is not like uh, passing the IAS and IPS, you are enjoying life for next 35 years. No. Every day is an IAS examination for you after the posting. It is not easy. Sir will know, I know, how you'll be tossed. Every day is a new day. Every day is new learning. So I would say that the first thing you should make up in mind is whether you want to choose the service, holiday service, then you should have the right attitude and aptitude. Just getting like any other job is not. It has got a very high social responsibility, very high risk involved, personal and also in, in the occupational. So unless you are totally fit mentally and physically to face the challenges, to be upright, whatever may come, I will not lose my convictions. Then only you can have the real benefit of being uh, serving in this service. Like I said, that in Indian Police Service, you have got multiple entries. For example, in TNPC, if you pass the Group 1 service, you either go as RDO for the revenue side, then become the collector. The other side, you have got police, where you become the Tamil Nadu Police Service. You get selected as the Deputy Superintendent of Police. After a period of eight years or nine years, you get a conferred IPS. Then you get to the regular stream. So for example, you are getting a conferred IPS after eight years. Then on the eighth year, whoever is entered as RR, the, the regular IPS officer, will be in equal seniority with you. So the loss of these eight years has to be compensated. And this is the advantage that what you have in the central service. So once you enter IPS, you are posted as assistant superintendent of police. As a state police officer, you are posted as DSP. Both are subdivision officers, equal cadre, equal rank. But when they travel together in the ladder of growth, IPS officers are getting fast promotions, and they attain the highest posting of DGP very soon, and they stay for longer time. Here, there is one more entry called Group B service. As I was telling about Group A service, more of technical nature. We have got Group B service, where you've got Danish that's, uh, and uh, the UT Union Territory cadre, and Pondicherry Police Service, and Pondicherry Civil Service. These are called Group B service. These officers who are selected for police or for the civil service will be working only in the UT cadres, like Delhi, you have got the, the, the uh, Daman, Andaman, Nicobar, uh, Lakshadweep, all these places, Agamant, like Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Goa, all these uh, areas will be under UT cadre. You will be posted only in the UT cadre. Agamant or the Danish people will be posted only in the UT cadre. PPS will be posted only in Pondicherry cadre. So these people also will be coming as a separate entity, but they have got a uh, chance to get into the mainstream of IPS after a certain period of time, say 10 years, they can come into the regular channel. There is an option to come to this channel through this uh, Group B service also. So this is the setup of getting into services. Once you get into IPS, then you have got options of uh, going to a zone. See, selection is not based on uh, what you want as a home carder. Home carder getting is extremely difficult nowadays. I understand, and most of you will know that. Now you have to choose one, st one state from one zone. You have got four or five zones, like south zone, north zone, west zone, central zone. For example, Tamil Nadu, you take Tamil Nadu as your preference, first preference. Second preference, Maharashtra. You choose Maharashtra as the second preference in the next zone. 
So every zone you have to take one. So once, if you are getting a very high mark, suppose you get state rank or the topper, you become topper, getting first five ranks or six ranks, and you opt out for Tamil Nadu, you will not get Tamil, you may not get Tamil Nadu because if there is no vacancy, if there is no vacancy of general list, if there is only a vacancy of OBC list or ST list, then you may not be considered for posting in Tamil Nadu in spite of your high marks. Then you have to choose for general list in the second uh, zone, that is Maharashtra. If there is no vacancy there, you'll be going to the next list, like in Odisha or you come to the Bengal side. So it is very, very difficult to, uh, to predict which cadre you're going to be placed. Your concern now is to get the highest possible ranking, not just passing a, a, a civil service, getting the highest possible ranking. So this is very important in terms of uh, getting, getting selected. So in course of time, we'll tell you more about it. And to IRS officer Nandakumar, sir, do you think the civil services are superior to private sector employment, particularly considering the aspirations of young graduates in liberalized India? Yeah, definitely. Uh, see, uh, when the private people appear before us, we get to know that um, it's like a, a macro management. When someone is in the government administration, whether being a district collector or an SP, or even a head of the office of any central government, they are into the macro management of the, uh, the, uh, the entire uh, missionary of India or a state. Whereas in a private organization, there are people, again, do, who are manning. Suppose someone is uh, the, the human resource. He will be manning only human resource. Someone is, again, finance. He will be manning only the finance. Whereas in the civil towers, anyone who is going up in the hierarchy, they will be in the macro management. Maybe, maybe not the salary. Maybe the salary may not be very attractive. But the amount of experience and the permutation with the public and with the, uh, with the corporate and also with the different set of people, uh, even in the hierarchy or even outside the hierarchy. This is a very big macro management. That is why even post-retirement, people when they go, when they get retired, the big corporates are after uh, the, the people that they want, uh, they want to be the part of the big administration, the macro administration. The reason because every experience, maybe as a district collector, someone thinks that district collector is again, uh, be people as a common man, district collector, but district collector itself uh, a training that they have to man when they become a secretary. Sagan sirs will, will brief very well about it. When someone is a district collector who is manning all the administration at the district level, which is again a basic unit of an administration of an India, when they become a secretary or a chief secretary or becoming a cabinet secretary, where the entire missionary is under uh, uh, the, the one single head, that macro management perception is starting from, uh, the, 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 from the career. So that is the, uh, the amount of experience uh, where each and every impact. I'll tell you, uh, I was instrumental in creating uh, the Department of Disabled Affairs in the year 2012-13. See, as a civil servant, I suppose I am a, a private individual who, who have worked in, in an ordinary job, maybe of a, a managerial category. So I, I may be known only to oh, certain people, or even, even I would have impacted uh, for unknown. I may not be having a greater capacity. But when I felt uh, the creation of the department, which is providing an opportunity, greater opportunity, for uh, the, the, uh, the differently uh, the able people or challenged people, which is giving me, still I feel that the, uh, the getting into the civil service, that amount of satisfaction. Yes, I have impacted so many. And this impact is uh, very much into the civil service. And which may not be even because ultimately in a corporate and a private, earning profit, then only you are retained. It's again, uh, see, the government is not about uh, the profit. It's about uh, manning the system that how India the Indian administration is looking that India wants to be projected as a developed country and a welfare country or a, a country which is again uh, orienting uh, uh, for a national identity. So this is very important. That is why people who aspire for civil service, even at the taluk level or at the village level, they have a satisfaction. I'm impacting on common men. And uh, the amount of uh, the revenue collected by the department, no, that's, I feel when someone is my, my officers who are collecting, it is impacting the entire uh, economy, where uh, when the expenditure is incurred by the expenditure departments, I feel very happy that uh, though we are on the on the backstage or on the on the on the not on the front end, I feel that the the amount of taxes collected, which is giving each and everyone to spend for the welfare of the nation, 
This is where a private career highly uh, not aspired when it's when in terms of an aspiration. Managerial aspiration, someone who have a managerial aspiration may try to become a CEO or a CIO or a CFO. But uh, from the rural side or from the socially economically backward side, their aspiration that they want to see India the developed nation. Like what Dr. Abdul Kalam sir stated when he set the vision for 2020, though he is no more, that vision people still carry. We are past 2020. But all the civil servants who get into the civil service, predominantly 99% have the vision that I want to make this country the best. And that is why always civil service aspiration found to be the best aspiration when compared to the private career. The question I want to pose to IAS officer Sagayam, sir. Many of the aspirants who have gathered here may want to become district collector and then achieve great heights such as secretary to government, chief secretary, or cabinet secretary. The word district collector motivates them. What in your stint as district collector had made you most proud? What I come to you all. You are right, the post of district collector uh, truly motivates every uh, candidate appearing for civil services examination. The former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, sat in a conference held in 2005. DM remains even today the linchpin of the administration in India. It only indicates the post of district collector is really significant and important. Lord Wavell, the second last Viceroy of India, he said, long after British have left, we will be remembered not for this or that act, but for the concept of the district collector we have left behind. Again, it also indicates the prominence of the post of district collector. The post of district collector remains a dream post for a large number of candidates appearing for civil service examination. In fact, I held the post of district collector in two districts, namely Namakal and Madurai as well. And you have asked which made me feel most proud during my period as a district collector. In fact, I was a district collector Namakal. I wanted to enforce a simple law, simple rule. The riot manual rule three, it clearly indicates every village administrative officer is supposed to stay in the respective charge village in case he doesn't stay, he shall be removed from service. This simple rule, as a district collector, I wanted to enforce. Practically, the village administrative officer doesn't stay in the village. There is no iota of sign of administration that exists in our villages. After all, India is a country of villages. The farmers are considered to be the backbone of this country. India lives in villages. The pathetic condition is that we don't have a sign of administration in our villages, lacks of villages. As a district collector, as a responsible civil servant, leave alone, I'm a son of a farmer. I, I am so proud to state that I'm a son of a farmer who understands the difficulties of the ordinary farmers of this country. But as a responsible civil servant, as a responsible district collector, I wanted to enforce this a simple rule. But I was not able to enforce it because of strong resistance from the organization of the village administrative officers. They have clear backing of the political executives. At the end, at the end, since I was pretty serious to enforce this law, Enforce this simple rule. They resisted. They organized agitation in front of collectorate. At the end, I was shifted. I was transferred for the 
Seka people. Thereafter, I was, I was uh, given an insignificant assignment. I was there for six months. When the public election for assembly, when it was announced, the Election Commission of India had chosen me and posted as district collector of Madurai. The mandate was uh, so clear, categorical, unequal. We had to conduct a free and fair election. It is so obvious, in 2009, there was an infamous Thirumangalam formula wherein there was vulgar display of Manipa. Every voter was bribed to vote in a particular fashion. At the time of announcement of the general election for the assembly, there were a lot of allegations against the election commission that they will not be able to conduct the election in a free and fair manner. In the given circumstances, I was posted. In fact, I was pretty serious and determined to ensure the conduct of free and fair election. In fact, I geared up the missionary and our flying squads and officials, they conducted frequent inspection, organized a raid, made seizures of money that was meant for distribution. In fact, we were extremely tougher. I myself personally raided and seized around 20 lakh cash. That was a real uh, tougher situation. This was, uh, this was on the one hand enforcing the law. On the other hand, I wanted to create awareness among the voters. I wanted to talk to, I wanted to address the students. So I sought the help of uh, certain NGOs, they were not willing to come. They were afraid. I sought the assistance of Rotary Club. They were also not prepared to come to our rescue. I thought Lions Club, uh, Lions Club will be really courageous. Normally, Lion is under to be uh, is an indication of valor and courage. Even the Lions Club will not be, they will be afraid to come to my rescue. I, the, at the end, I myself went and addressed the students. I spoke to them, it had a greater impact. And fearing reper repercussion, two cases were filed against me in the High Court with the plea that I should be immediately transferred. And in fact, I was uh, supposed to conduct an election in the time stipulated because it's a tougher process. Every process of election was so structured and scheduled that it should be done before the time stipulated. We didn't have time. At the same time that I had to prepare counter for the case filed, you know, we had a really tougher time. Since we were determined to enforce law, we were so tough, certain parties were unhappy. In fact, my effigy was burnt in certain parts of the district, Madurai district. At a particular point of time, one of my ROs, returning officer, he went on leave and he was, in fact, he should not have done that because he was placed with the Election Commission of India. But he went on leave making complaint against me that I am forcing him to prefer complaint against the VIPs of certain parties, which I didn't do. But this man was, you know, was going on leave and you know, he went to a particular hospital and got admitted. Like, you know, acting like Nadir Tiraham Sivaji Ganeshan, Nenji Valiki De. And that, you know, sort of a situation he created. And I had to face, you know, everything. At the end, one of our drivers, and his dead body was found near a village in close proximity to Melur. We had really tough a time. And I faced with the enormous courage. At the end, we were able to contain and control effectively the vulgar display of Manipa. In fact, the last day was a counting day. The counting was almost uh, it was getting over. Around 3 o'clock, I went to a collector's bungalow for having lunch. 
and I return to make a final announcement. In fact, I, I was approaching the um, uh, counting uh, center in Madurai. It was you know, in close proximity to collectorate. Uh, there is uh, another, uh, uh, the Gandhi Mandabam was there. When I was proceeding in my vehicle, a, a group of you know, 80 or 100 people, they stopped my vehicle. My driver was afraid, uh, but uh, I wanted him to stop the vehicle. And I got down, I asked them. They were extremely happy. They said, Madhra Yemita Sundarabandi Yane, Yengal Tangame. So this is how they started you know, pricing me. Maybe somebody may be uh, out of overjoy, or maybe under the influence of Tasmac, they would have uh, they would have expressed their happiness. But I secured passback from election commission of it is a Tasmac, or otherwise I secured passback from election commission of India. In fact, we received an appreciation letter from chief election commissioner for having conducted the election in a free and fair manner in Madurai. And I really felt you know, proud as a district collector. <laughs> this, was, this was a starting point. At the end, what had happened, I received a complaint uh, indicating irregularity, serious irregularities committed in the arena of uh, granite mining. I went and saw, I checked myself, I confirmed. And I sent a report to the government indicating substantial loss to the government tech checker to the tune of 16,000 crores. And within two days' time, in fact, I wanted a stern action, again, a, a stern action to be taken against uh, the offenders. In fact, action was taken. I was instantly shifted from the post of district collector. Though that uh, transfer uh, gave me pain, a uh, trouble, I still feel uh, proud that I was able to uh, protect the interest of the government and the society. One incident in a very brief fashion, I would like to indicate that one Aritabati Hillak, uh, Aritabati Hillak, when I was a district collector there, I received uh, information from Tasna. Uh, stating that the villages of the Aritapati, they organized a peaceful agitation in their village. I sent a deputy collector to verify and report to me what was really going on. The deputy collector came to me and stated, Sir Aritapati Balayla, Avanga granite adikira the kaha, Jeeva issue pantanga government lay now, Varada Kala Munadia, Jeeva issue pantanga, and the Aritapati Balay, Uru kilometer Nila Iruko, and the Balayla. 2,200 uh, years, Kimu 2,000, uh, Kimu 200. Yeranda Yerudur Andhilkum Tamil Brahmi script is there. Adipona, one Shiva temple which was built 1,300 years ago, it is there. Um, Idamarla Yirki, Adamatumilla, Paravayal Naraya Yirki, Adasuti, Kolangal Riki, Yeri Hilirki. They remained a source of uh, major source of uh, irrigation and drinking water. Now uh, the miners, the granite miners, they were going to destroy it, and the people are uh, see they were upset, and therefore they started organizing a uh, peaceful agitation. So that's the information I received. All the people came the next day. All the people came with the plea, "Sir, our hillock should be protected." But when I looked at uh, the when I looked at uh, the GVO, it was very clear. A particular miner, a powerful miner, was permitted to mine that you no know, hillock. But uh, as a collector, I am supposed to implement the order of the government. One hand, I am supposed to implement the order of the, uh, the government. On the other hand, the poor villages, their interest to be protected. It's a historic monument that should be protected. And it is actually like a bird sanctuary, biodiversity hub. So that should be protected. If I don't implement the GO, I am running risk. If I, uh, I am running a risk, uh, if I help you know, the poor people again, I am running risk. If I implement the order, 
the people will be you know see they will be upset their interest will be affected but i did i decided not to implement the order to protect the interest of the uh, villagers i in fact protected now uh, now the hillak i protected the state government had uh, made a declaration uh, making an announcement indicating that particular hillak is a first biodiversity heritage site in tamil nadu <laughs> so i really i really feel proud as a district collector i discharge my duty with utmost sincerity honesty and responsibility thank you sir question to irs officer nandakumar sir you have been popular among civil service aspirants delivering lectures explaining about your preparation for the civil services as a senior official of income tax please tell us about new perspectives about how you were able to overcome challenges during your preparation um it's not uh, my time or this time or the present time it's all about uh, the basic fundamentals of the civil service civil service or expectation they want uh, the best personality that is all and uh, to express your uh, personality you are uh, given at three levels or three levels one the prelims uh, second one is mains so third one is interview prelims in varappa it's again a uh, uh, mass uh, competition mass competition so they want to eliminate as quick as and as simple as so that is why they have an objective system because with them initially uh, people uh, were straight away allowed to write mains examination but since numbers are ad romba adhigamaanadanal they have made it uh, to filter at the at the at the initial level so prelims examination what asked in 80s 90s and 2000 2010 and 2020 the question content and uh, and the orientation adu change agave illa i am telling you again endha edathula kelvi kekkanumo andha edathula avanga kelvi kettu irudha irukranga ena kelvi kekkra andha puridal that's again the basically have you understood the, the issue or any subject what is your basic understanding of a subject that is why they have segmented into a different category of knowledge like a uh, indian polity indian economy history history la ancient india medieval india modern india and indian national movement because modern india aspiration as the topic says modern india aspiration the modern india and indian national movement sir that is all about the history and uh, geography world geography indian geography when you are preparing for civil service for state uh, state uh, public service commission tamil nadu na tamil nadu geography again uh, the uh, the science again physics chemistry biology otherwise the the advanced component is called science and technology this basic knowledge is very much required uh, what we have studied in our school time nama idu onnu perusa it is not a great thing they are trying to test you this is what uh, what we have studied so far uh, in our school days these five subjects which is called uh, the uh, the social science and the science all put together as five subjects which is been uh, asked uh, as a, a prelims uh, basic fundamental question adha prelims oda adanal prelims questions are most of time very objective and sometimes every subject will have an update so that is called the current affairs where um, uh, the hindu is again uh, very uh, very very good about uh, giving the facts and also when someone is appearing for the mains examination they require uh, facts to be highlighted for uh, their subjectivity the, the answers again suppose they are asking analyze discuss or rather uh, even uh, to uh, to elaborate so in that orientation reading hindu may be uh, the uh, the standard uh, 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 daily the, the english daily which gives you a subject to standard subjectivity or a popular subjectivity or the subjectivity which has been accepted by many uh, uh, many uh, luminaries so that is why the magazine like uh, uh, the hindu provides you a subject to interpretation which is again very standard for your mains examination mains examination la um, when it comes to uh, because yenak prelims varappa na irundha time la when i was preparing it was 150 questions to ask and um, it was uh, the uh, we had uh, uh, the uh, the optional papers that was 120 questions 120 minutes so time factors were very very bothering us but the new pattern and the new system which they have shifted from the subject orientation to uh, the aptitude orientation 
நிறைய பேருக்கு ஆப்டிடியூட் ஓரியன்டேஷன் தான் இன்றைக்கி இருக்கிற ப்ரெசன்ட் ஜென்ரேஷன் தே ஹேவ் அ ப்ராப்ளம் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தம் ஃபேல் பீயிங் ப்ரிடாமினட்லி மெனி இன்ஜினியரிங் கிராஜுவேட்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் அஸ்பயரிங் ஃப்ரம் தமிழ்நாடு தி இன்ஜினியரிங் கிராஜுவேட்ஸ் ஆர் குட் அட் த ஜிஎஸ் அவுட் ஆஃப் ஹண்ட்ரட் கொஷன்ஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் கொஷன்ஸ் ஒன் டுவெண்ட்டி மினிட்ஸ் அகேன் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் மார்க்ஸ் வேர் இஸ் சி சாட் இஸ் அகேன் குவாலிஃபைங் பேப்பர் வேர் யூ ரிக்வயர் ஒன் தேர்ட் அந்த ஒன் தேர்ட் எடுக்கிறதுல ஸ்டில் வாட் இஸ் அ ப்ராப்ளம் Uh, I didn't have that problem because I was not the uh, part of the whole, the, uh, the new system, I was part of the whole system. But the aptitude, because the, the aptitude here meant it is not the management aptitude as you appear for uh, civil jobs exams, Madhuri uh, Illama, like CAT examination or a GMAT, and the Madhuri and aptitude illa. Inge aptitude is all about comprehension. What is comprehension? School days, we have comprehension. It is not very new for a comprehension. But நம்மளோட ஸ்கூல் காம்ப்ரஹென்ஷன்லாம் ரொம்ப தமாஷான காம்ப்ரஹென்ஷன் தான் கீழே ஒரு காம்ப்ரஹென்ஷன் பேசேஜ் கொடுத்துருப்பாங்க வீல் பி கிவன் கொஷன்ஸ் கிவன் கீழே வந்து ஒரு கொஷன்ஸ் கொடுத்துருப்பாங்க ஒரு செட் ஆஃப் கொஷன்ஸ் கொடுத்துருப்பாங்க பட் வாட் வீ வில் சி வி வில் ரீட் த பேசேஜ் அண்ட் லுக் ஃபார் த கொஷன் அண்ட் வீ வில் சி அகேன் த கொஷனில் இருக்க ஏதாவது ஒரு வேர்டு அந்த பேசேஜில் இருக்கான்னு வி யூஸ் டு சர்ச் ஃபார் இட் தட் இஸ் அவர் மெத்தடாலஜி ஆஃப் அ காம்ப்ரஹென்ஷன் பட் த யூபிஎஸ்சி மெத்தடாலஜி வெதர் யூ ஹவ் அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் த பேசேஜ் நீங்கள் அந்த பேராகிராஃபை நீங்கள் புரிஞ்சுக்கிட்டீங்களா புரிஞ்சுக்கிட்டீங்க அப்படின்னா அந்த பேராகிராஃபில் இருந்து பியாண்டாக இருக்கிறது தான் உங்களோட காம்ப்ரஹென்ஷன் யூ ஹவ் அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் கிரியேட்டர் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் இட்ஸ் நாட் அண்ட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் கன்ஃபைன் டு த பேராகிராஃப் ஸோ இது எதுக்காகனா வென் யூ கெட் இன் டு அன் அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் அந்த அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் என்ட்ரு ஆகிறப்ப நீங்கள் காண்டெக்ஸ்ட்டை ஓவரால் காண்டெக்ஸ்ட்டை நீங்கள் காம்ப்ரஹென் பண்ணணும் நான் கொடுத்த நேரத்தில் அந்த டைமில் மட்டும் இல்லை ஹிஸ்ட்ரியில் என்ன முன்னாடி என்ன நடந்தது இப்போ என்ன நடந்துகிட்ருக்கோ இது நடந்தால் என்ன நடக்கும் அப்படின்ற அந்த காம்ப்ரஹென்ஷன் டெசிஷன் மேக்கிங் ஹவ் குயிக் அண்ட் ஹவ் எஃபெக்டிவ் டெசிஷன் மேக்கிங் அண்ட் அகேன் the communication all these are all uh, logic and one all are it's, it's not a mathematical ability they are asking it is a logic again logical orientation is again left brain orientation so this is what upsc is expecting it's not about english language or about a mathematical orientation arithmetic orientation it is all about your aptitude and this aptitude everyone has the problem questions were up they are finding it difficult whereas subjectivity la there are again i'm telling you the line papers only one optional paper uh, one optional subject two papers that is left to you but optional papers you know, when i chose it were two optional subjects now again one but that were compensated with two gs paper rendu gs paper irukku ipo extra va seithirukanga munadi gs 1 gs 2 irundhu now ipo gs 3 and 4 4 vande namma oorla padicha moral story chinna vayasla vande moral story so ethics and integrity வாட் இஸ் எத்திக் எது நீதி நியாயம் ஸோ இந்த எது நீதி நியாயமில் பர்சனல் எத்திக்ஸ் என்விரான்மெண்ட் எத்திக்ஸ் கல்ச்சுரல் எத்திக்ஸ் ஆர் எனி எத்திக் பொலிட்டிக்கல் எத்திக்ஸ் தீஸ் எத்திக் அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேட்டிவ் எத்திக்ஸ் இந்த எத்திக்ஸ் எல்லாம் எது நீதி நேர்மை நியாயம் அப்படின்ற அந்த உணர்வை தான் அவங்க ஒரு சுச்சுவேஷன் கொடுத்து தேர் ஆஸ்கிங் கொஷின்ஸ் பட் ஸ்டில் வி நீட் அ டெக்ஸ்டுவல் ஓரியன்டேஷன் அந்த பேசேஜஸ்க்கு வி ஸ்டில் வி நீட் அ டெக்ஸ்டுவல் ஓரியன்டேஷன் திஸ் பேசிக் ஓரியன்டேஷன் நாம் எழுதுறப்ப அந்த பேராகிராஃபில் நம்ம இல்லை ப்ராப்பராக எக்ஸ்ப்ரெஸ் பண்ணலன்னா அது இன்டர்வியூலும் அந்த அந்த அளவுக்கு எக்ஸ்டெண்ட் ஆகுறது இல்லை இன்டர்வியூவும் இட்ஸ் அகேன் இட்ஸ் அ பர்சனல் இன்டர்வியூ ரிமெம்பர் தேட் எனக்கு இந்த ஆல் தீஸ் ப்ராசஸில் ஆஸ் அலோஷியஸ் செட் தோ ஐ எம் அ ஸ்கூல் ட்ராப் அவுட் அண்ட் அகேன் அ சைல்ட் லேபர் அண்ட் பீயிங் அகேன் ஒரு டிஸ்லக்ஷிக் இருந்ததுனால எனக்கு படிக்கிறதுல ஐ ஹேட் லாட் ஆஃப் ப்ராப்ளம் இன் ரீடிங் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் அண்ட் ரைட்டிங் பட் ரிமெம்பர் ஐ வாஸ் ஒன்லி எய்மிங் ஃபார் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் எவ்ரி திங் my basic understanding of if any knowledge if i have understood i am not memorizing if i have understood i have understood i will apply any time ipo the light eridu is just an led i know the difference between led and a incandescent light or or gundu bulb ku and led ku electricity consumption la mattum illa adu electronic a electrical ah abdin led is again more of an electronic and whereas incandescent again an electrical na english literature da but remember when i go and work in my in a work environment எனக்கு இங்கிலீஷ் லிட்ரேச்சர்னால ஐ நீட் டு நோ அபவுட் ஈவன் தி தி ஆப்ரேட்டிங் சிஸ்டம் அண்ட் வாட் இஸ் அகேன் தி 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 சாஃப்ட்வேர் ஆர் தி டேட்டா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் வெதர் தி டேட்டா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் இஸ் அகேன் வாட் டைப் ஆஃப் டேட்டா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் வென் வி அனலைஸ் தி தி டேட்டா ஃபார் அ டாக்ஸிவேஷன் ஸோ வெரி இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் உங்களோட பேசிக் நாலேஜ் உங்கள் உலகத்தில் சுற்றி நடக்கிற எல்லா விஷயங்களும் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் பண்ணிக்கிறது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் அதை நீங்கள் குயிக்கான டைமில் டூ ஹவர்ஸ்க்குள்ளே இல்லை த்ரீ ஹவர்ஸ்க்குள்ளே இல்லைனா இன்டர்வியூவாக இருந்தால் டுவெண்ட்டி மினிட்ஸ்க்குள்ளே 20 minutes kulla because when we sit in the
ஒருத்தரோட எக்ஸ்பிரஷனில் அவங்களோட பர்சனாலிட்டியில் கொஷின்ஸ் கேட்டுட்டு அவங்க சொல்கிற விதம் நடந்துக்கிற விதம்ல ட்வெண்ட்டி மினிட்ஸ் இட்ஸ் மோர் தென் இனஃப் எப்படி பார்க்குறோம்னா இப்போ நீ எப்படி நடந்துக்கிறியோ இன்டர்வியூ போர்டில் கேட்ட கேள்விக்கு ஹவ் யூ ஆர் பிஹேவிங் யுவர் செல் யுவர் ஆட்டிடியூட் அந்த பிஹேவியர் அந்த ரியாக்ஷன் ஆல் தீஸ் ஆர் ஆல் தே ஆர் ட்ரைங் டு அசஸ் ஃபார் சிக்ஸ்டி இயர்ஸ் வரைக்கும் அறுபது வயசு வரைக்கும் உங்களுக்கு இந்த இன்டெகிரிட்டியும் இந்த ஆட்டிடியூடும் இந்த பிஹேவியரும் இந்த எத்திக்ஸும் இருக்குமா அப்படின்னு இது தேரிட்டிக்கல் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கிடையாது ஒன்லி டு எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் அ ப்ரிலம்ஸ் லெவலில் இல்லை மெயின்ஸ் லெவலில் அப்படின்னு ஈவன் அந்த பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் த ஃபைனல் இன்டர்வியூ யூ ஆல் ரிக்வயர் எனக்கு இது பெரிய சேலஞ்சாக இருந்தது பட் நாட் சேலஞ்ச் இன் மை பர்சனாலிட்டி என்னை எக்ஸ்ப்ரெஸ் பண்ணுறது தான் எனக்கு சேலஞ்ச் இருந்ததில் ரீடிங்கில் ரைட்டிங்கில் அதில் எக்ஸ்ப்ரெஷனில் ஆனால் ஐ நோ மை ப்ராப்ளம் யூ சுட் ஆல்சோ நோ யுவர் ப்ராப்ளம் வேர் யூ வாண்ட் யுவர் பர்சனாலிட்டி டு கெட் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் ஸோ தட் இஸ் வேர் வென் ஐ ப்ராசஸ் வென் ஐ ரைட் தி ஹிந்து நியூஸ் பேப்பர் I know what news will be relevant for my prelims, for mains and for my interview. When I read my center page article of the Hindu, I know that uh, it may be helpful for my essay examination. And I put it in the first page of um, the Hindu, uh, September 20, uh, 1878. I glanced at this point, there is a salt commissioner in this term. Salt Satyagraha. And Salt Satyagraha in India happened. That's again, that Champaran, Inga Vedaranyam, Marakanam. When I'm traveling, na history UPSC padi chappan, adhi enakku vadavudu. Oh, right. Buckingham Canal, which was constructed, connecting till Nellur. Ennala padi chada paakka mudi idu, understand mani. Inda adhila salt commissioner abdi indra, abdi oru concept irundudu na padi chada. Inda paper le inga paakkara paai kudu able to connect. Idu thang challenge in the civil service exam la. இந்த சேலஞ்ச் எனக்கும் இருந்தது பாஸ் பண்ணுற வரைக்கும் ஆனால் பாஸ் பண்ணுற வரைக்கும் இது எக்ஸ்க்யூஸாக இருக்கக்கூடாது பாஸ் பண்ணுற வரைக்கும் இதை ப்ரிப்ரேஷனாக மாற்றுற ஆளுங்களுக்கு மட்டும்தான் இந்த சைடில் யூபிஎஸ்சி வில் ஐடென்டிஃபை யுவர் பர்சனாலிட்டி வென் யூ ஆர் ப்ரிப்பேர்டு ப்ரிப்பேர்ட் ஃபார் த நேஷனல் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அண்ட் ஃபார் தி சோஷியல் வெல்ஃபேர் அண்ட் ஃபார் தி வெல்ஃபேர் ஆஃப் த டோட்டல் இந்தியா தே வில் வெரி வெல் அக்னாலஜ் உங்களுக்கு அப்படி ஒரு ஆளுமை இருந்ததுன்னா எந்த இடத்துலையும் உங்களை யூபிஎஸ்சி மிஸ் பண்ண மாட்டாங்க இந்த சேலஞ்சை நீங்கள் இன்டர்னலாக பர்சனாலிட்டி ஓரியன்டேஷனாக எடுத்துக்கிட்டிங்கன்னா மட்டும்தான் இதை கிளியர் பண்ணுறதுக்கான அத்தனை ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டிக்கும் நான் சொல்லுவேன் முட்டாள்னா சொல்லுவேன் ஏன்னா எனக்கு படிப்பு வரலல்ல படிப்பு வராத இந்த முட்டாளுக்கு ஒரு டெமோக்ராட்டிக் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டியாக யூபிஎஸ்சி எஸ் ப்ரொவைடட் நீங்கள்லாம் இன்டெலக்சுவல் சர்ம் இந்த எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கண்டக்ட் பண்ணி நூற்றி ஐம்பது பேரை உங்களை இங்கே உட்கார வச்சுருக்காங்க யூ ஹாவ் ஆல் த கெப்பாசிட்டி டு டேக் அப் அ கிரேட்டர் சேலஞ்ச் ஆஸ் அலோஷியஸ் செட் be prepared for the challenge for the national development thank you thank you sir question to ias officer sagayam sir in the notification for the civil services examination 2023 the upsc has announced that more than 1100 vacancies would be filled in contrast to the limited number of vacancies many years ago will the rise in number of vacancies make a difference particularly on the cut off marks please give an overview of the trends in cut off marks for prelims mains and interview to help aspirants plan for the examination it is indeed uh, very important for the candidates appearing for civil service civil services examination to have a thorough understanding as to cut off marks such understanding is uh, is really uh, helpful and you have indicated uh, that this year upsc notification has clearly indicated uh, enhanced vacancies something like you know 1105 there are factors that are responsible for cut off marks number 1 the number of vacancies if you have enhanced and increased vacancies there is a chance that you have uh, lesser cut off marks the other important factor that is actually number of uh, candidates appearing in that particular year there is a another important factor that determines the cut off mark is the nature of examination in that particular year 
the examination or the papers are easy or the papers are tougher. So these are the uh, factors that determines the cutoff marks. Sometimes in particular year, large number of the brightest students will prefer lucrative career in private sector like you know, IT or other corporate sector. So when the brighter and brightest prefer private lucrative jobs, high paying jobs, the less competent students will come to appear for civil service examination where you will get less cut off marks. These are the factors that are considered to be vital for determining the cut off marks. But if you look at the vacancies pertaining to 2019, it is 927. For 2020, the number of vacancy was 796. If you look at the number of vacancies pertaining to 2021, it is 712. As you have indicated, when you have enhanced number of vacancies, the cutoff marks will go down. But it doesn't always occur. If you look at this, Rossi, look at this information, like you know, 2019, when you have 927 vacancies announced, the cutoff marks pertaining to general candidates for prelims is 98. When you have 796 vacancies announced pertaining to 2020, the cutoff mark for prelims is 92. When you have 712 vacancies pertaining to 2021, the cutoff mark is still less 87. That is for preliminary examination. For main examination, for 2009, uh, this is for general candidate. Whatever I have indicated is applicable to general candidates. For main examination, I am speaking about OBC uh, pertaining to 2019. The cutoff mark is 706. 2020, it is 680. 2021, it is 700. For final examination, the cutoff mark uh, pertaining to OBC, it is actually 925 for 90, uh, 19 and 907 for 2020, 910 for 2021. What, what does it indicate? It apparently indicates the cutoff marks are obviously low. When you have enhanced vacancies, naturally the cutoff marks should go down. It should be low. But it doesn't always occur even when you have lesser number of vacancies. In the past two, three years, the cutoff marks will be or low. This only indicates the examination process becomes increasingly tougher. The papers are really tougher. Especially preliminary examination is obviously a stage where large number of uh, uh, lesser competent students or candidates are eliminated. So what is expected from candidates to face such a tougher papers the right preparation. You have to have right teachers or mentors. You have to have right material. And you need to have right coaching centers, if at all you prefer. And you should ensure that you strain every nerve 
and work hard to face this toughest examination in the nation and it is one of the toughest examination in the world and therefore i request candidates uh, to prepare to equip themselves fully to face this toughest examination of this country the question to dr stanley johnny in the civil services preliminary examination last year we find several questions on international affairs the topics covered in last year's questions include the united nations general assembly granting observer status to the non member states intergovernmental organizations seeking observer status in the united nations assembly and permanent observers in the united nations general assembly maintaining mission at un headquarters questions were also asked from topics such as suspension of the constitution and government by the military in guinea the suspension of parliament by the president in tunisia please give an overview about a few important topics relating to international affairs that are newsworthy this year thanks aloysius for the question and thanks to my co panelists all reputed officers for their fascinating and inspiring words uh, i'm glad to be here uh, coming to the topic uh, i think uh, it's it's a uh, it's it's a very interesting time to be a student of international relations you know a lot of things are happening across the world and also in india if you look at it from india's foreign policy uh, i think there are two ways to look at aloysius question one is to look at the global developments and the other is to look at india's foreign policy so globally uh, especially the last year uh, i think all of us have seen rapid changes at the international system uh so if you look at the top developments i think yeah i think none of us are going to miss that russia's uh you know the ongoing conflict with ukraine is now dominating the headlines so the war that began in february last year uh, is rapidly changing the global uh, economic and strategic landscape so i think uh, uh, we should understand the origins of the crisis what actually led to the conflict in ukraine and there are conflicting narratives right one is that uh, president putin launched an unprovoked invasion in ukraine and the other narrative is that you know because of uh, uh, the the competition in europe russia russia was forced to launch this war to protect its interests so understand the origins of the conflict and how the ukraine war is you know what kind of an impact it is having on the global order and secondly i think you know what is india's position on the war because india's position uh, is has been in the limelight over the last one year one of the reasons the sanctions the western sanctions on russia uh, have not been as effective as many of the western policy makers had expected was because of the rise of india and china because india and china uh, have not joined the sanctions M majority of other countries in the global south particularly these two countries big markets big economies china is the second largest economy india is the fifth largest economy so that shows you know how the global economic landscape is slipping and on the other side india has taken a position in Indi india's position has attracted a lot of criticism saying that some commentators in the west were saying that india is financing putin's war etc etc but from india's point of view uh, you know india india has opposed to the war from a moral uh you know un international laws point of view but at the same time taken position to protect its interest to un so understand the conflict understand india's position and secondly i think uh, you know one of the i think one of the most important ongoing tensions globally is the competition between the united states and china cold war came to an end in 1991 and after the disintegration of the soviet union we saw a period of the us dominance over the global order so again now see that dominance is being challenged with the rise of china with the rise of russia with the rise of other countries other economic powers so this competition is now heating up in in the indo pacific region again in india's neighborhood so during the cold war from an indian point of view the battlefields of the cold war or the front line of the cold war was in eastern europe far away but now when the new competition new strategic rivalry is heating up that is happening in our you know 
we the, the front lines are there we, we are on the front line it is unfolding in the indo pacific so india can't evade this uh, rivalry that is unfolding before us especially if uh, you know a, a conflict breaks out around taiwan i think uh, uh, our strategic space would shrink would shrink further and we will have to uh, take difficult decisions and then thirdly uh, you know uh, in in west asia which is a vital region for india which is a vital region for china it is also vital for the united states why it's vital for india and the india and china because india is dependent on imports for over 80% of its energy requirements and uh, a huge quantities of this come from the gulf region the persian gulf region for china 40% of its energy requirements are coming from the persian gulf region and the china is now the new rising power with the saudi iran reconciliation we actually witnessed the arrival of china as a major pole in west asia and the united states is the traditional great power in the region and the united states would like to retain its influence even when its its uh, its focus is being shifted away from the region to the indo pacific or to europe to contain russia so these are the major developments internationally if you look at it and from india's point of view i think you know uh, uh, you know uh, in its in, in india's neighborhood of course you face problems with china you have a very tense border with china at least since 2020 the border situation is not uh, normal so india faces this challenge of uh, maintaining peace and tranquility in the border without compromising on your sovereignty while at the same time managing china's rise in the indo pacific region and then pakistan is now going through a very difficult phase internally pakistan is in you know unstoppable decline with economic with an economic and political crisis uh, being unfolded in the country so how it is going to affect us and our relationship and in afghanistan you have the taliban back in power when the taliban were in power in the 1990s it posed very difficult uh, challenges to india from a security point of view and now the taliban are in power over the last 20 years india have made huge investments in afghanistan so how the return of the taliban is going to affect you uh, from a foreign policy point of view from an economic security point of view etc etc so your both your continental uh periphery as well as your maritime periphery in your maritime periphery the rise of china and america's pivot are posing both challenges and opportunities and in your continental peripheries periphery you know the return of the taliban the trouble going on in uh, pakistan etc etc pose you extra challenges and at the same time you have you face you know india is fast rising power india is now uh uh you know uh, presiding over g20 and rise of g20 itself shows how multilateralism could evolve so this offers enormous opportunities to india from a foreign policy point of view which is becoming a world power so this is you know roughly the global landscape you face major challenges in the global order you face uh, uh you know challenges in your in your periphery in your both your continental and maritime periphery you also face huge opportunities the changes in the global order the prospects for a multilateral order itself is offering huge uh, opportunities for india to expand its diplomatic footprint to emerge as one of the pillars of the new global order thank you we'll proceed to questions from the floor uh, good morning everybody so my question is regarding the new trends in uh, uh the materials that are produced so early days as sir said uh, the materials were restricted you had to read ncert you had to follow a newspaper and you will be pretty good with all the notifications and uh proceedings happening but with change of time there are lots of magazines lots of coaching classes and uh, uh guidance materials coming up which is leading to the more extent and expanse of materials and a limited amount of time that you have to distribute amongst prelims mains and amongst uh, different uh, the optional subject and all other uh, uh, different aspects of the same thing so how do you restrict the quality identify the quality of material that you read especially for current affairs 
also for the analysis that will help you with the optional writing, essay writing. So uh, how do we decide and identify what's right uh, quality and quantity time to be given for the reading of materials that are available in uh, internet or market everywhere. Thank you. Yes. The, uh, basically, uh, it's, a, it's an important question, what you asked again. The uh, coaching material and your preparation, or all should be in single line. It's like uh, uh, in, the, in the firing, when I was in the NCC, when we were in the firing, my eye, you, blade, and the target, all should be in single line. If anything is again getting, uh, um, getting not, not in one single line, we will hit the, uh, hit the target, the bullseye, nothing but. So uh, many used to ask question in terms of materials, sir, uh, NCRT, or for Tamil Nadu, TNPSC again, see uh, the Tamil Nadu State Board. It is not the, the TNPSC or the Tamil Nadu State Book, the UPSC is trying to take questions. If you go through the bibliography or any for any chapter, uh, the, at the end of the chapter, you can see from which uh, uh, so standard uh, international uh, text and the, the, the uh, national text which they have taken the content as such. That is why all the, NC, the, the NCRT text or uh, the content are taken from the standard international and national authors. And those authors are uh, not, uh, again, well-qualified content authors. They are not actually an author who is subject to subjectivity. And uh, that is why the standard text or the basic knowledge when it comes to, we confine to NCRT. Yeah, NCRT na, NCRT lerikra content on the basic content. Yella arme school level and the knowledge of terinji ka kudiya or content. Ninga samugatla in the society la ninga niche ma apply panna kudiya or content ada arko and the school knowledge la and the NCRT arkoto and the adis ke Tamil Nadu state book arkoto. Idhila and the author paakra pa think that. Um, when someone is setting a question, you know, in the challenge, you know, uh, people uh, go to a, a coaching academy. When they go to a coaching academy, they are having a format of teaching. The polity of Dinorapa, they will teach about legislature uh, on the executive judiciary. But when it turns a question, the, uh, the, the question setter is again an author or rather a professor. He is a resource person. A resource person and uh, whether he is connected to the subject or not connected to the subject, he'll be, he'll be given. When he sets a question, it is not the subjectivity on the based on the subjectivity. Our one the our instead to go on a question set pandla. Mind lauch kanga. Our enna pandraar na or text. He is choosing a, a a standard international author or a, a national author or a standard text erdgal. And the text erdgal. Ninga pa geography la question. Ipo neethi kora yedik solra na. Ipo ka questions la they are not confined only to the NCRT. When it comes to current affairs, that is why I was stating even Hindu also citing it. When the forest report, recently I was going through the forest report, I set up one content. That is the biodiversity hypothesis in the concept. And the biodiversity hypothesis of the interest, the biodiversity in the interior. And the biodiversity hypothesis, again, that's a report. Report actually published by, by the, uh, the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. When food and agriculture, if you have a simple UPSC question set, in the forest report, UNEP report is prepared, or the FAO is prepared. In the United Nations, what is the organization report ready? If you have read the forest report, you will know that the FAO is prepared. If the organization is prepared, if the question is, 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 they are taking, even for the comprehension also, I'm telling you, the standard materials or the material which is globally published and nationally published. Globally published, nationally published. Ninga government published panna ella report on padi ingilam. Environmental report, adha padi chuparunga. Educational report, adha padi chuparunga. Oru oru department oda annual report padi kirappa. Adhilla basic a ella knowledge or ninga in the in the basic knowledge padi thodi lamme adhilla update ayirko. That's why you have to update the basic knowledge of the basic knowledge. That's why you have to ask the question of the current affairs question. That's why the Hindu would have also published a certain hypothesis on the topic. That's why there is a theme. The theme is forest and health. The theme for the 2023, they have highlighted as forest and health. That's why forest and health, they are talking about rural health and urban health. 
when i'm asking about rural health la rural base la irukra or question ketta nu vechukengala what is a rural health and what is an urban health adha enna solranga na and report la rural side la makkal la inda inda gramathu makkal la soil la irukra and micro micro bacteria la vandu it's creating a a gastrointestinal infection create aagudhu idu southern adhavad urban side la apdi or infection illa adanal rural health romba prone a irukku indha maadhiri microbial or microbiota data abdinna and the data la chinna chinna and the terminology la is all basic terminology someone has to understand from the basic science la irundhu adhu basic biology they are telling and uh, talking about again that um, the, uh, the the immuno regulatory disease abdinna immuno regulatory disease abdinna thiriyen or vaartha sonna na இது என்னடா இது இந்த வார்த்தை நான் இங்கிலீஷ் விட்டு வச்சேன் எனக்கு என்ன தெரியும் பயாலஜியில் அந்த பயோ டைவர்சிட்டி ஹைபாதிஸ் படிக்கிறப்ப அதில் அந்த ஆத்தரை ஹைலைட் பண்ணுறாங்க இந்த இந்த வேர்டை எங்கேருந்து எடுத்தாங்கன்றதை ஹைலைட் பண்ணுறாங்க அது வெறும் ஒரு ஒரு பேரை தான் ஆனால் அந்த ஒரு பேராவை படிக்கிறப்ப தட்ஸ் அ சர்ஃபேஸிங் பட் அண்டர்லைங்கில் தெர் ஆர் ஸோ மெனி பேசிக் நாலேஜ் தட் இஸ் வாய் ஃபார் த பேசிக் நாலேஜ் யூ கேன் கன்ஃபேன் டு என்சிஆர்டி ஃபார் கொஞ்சம் லிட்டில் எலாபரேட்டட் நாலேஜ் you can go to a standard author like gochan liang abdin or idu iruk gochan liang padikira pa i get to know about a, a tropical uh, a climatic condition temperate climatic condition as a standard author indian polity la ninga dd basu padikringlo illana swaminathan padikringlo illana ninga vandu ninga edavadhu or guide padikringlo adu guide that's again derivative material derivative material la nare interpretations irukum ana ethana per constitution la and 395 article முந்நூற்றி தொண்ணூத்தஞ்சு ஆர்டிக்கலும் நீங்கள் கிளான்ச் பண்ணியிருந்தீங்கனாலே கொஷின் பேப்பரை பார்த்துருந்தீங்கனாலே ஜஸ்ட் சி த கொஷின் பேப்பர் முந்நூற்றி அறுபத்தஞ்சிலும் கொஷின் இல்லை நான் அடிக்கடிக்கு என்னோடய கிளாஸ் எடுக்கிறப்ப சொல்லுவேன் ஃப்ரீ கிளாஸ் எடுக்கிறப்ப டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் ஏலையும் ஃபிஃப்டி ஒன் ஏ கே வருஷா வருஷம் கேள்வி இருக்குது நானும் சொல்லிகிட்டே இருக்கிறேன் தேட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் ஏவில் எத்தனாவது அமெண்ட்மெண்ட்டில் எப்போ ரைட் டு எஜுகேஷன் ரைட் டு எஜுகேஷன் வந்ததுன்னோ டூ தௌசண்ட் டூவில் ஆனால் ரைட் டு எஜுகேஷன் அது இம்ப்ளிமெண்ட் ஆகுது கேம் இன் டு எஃபெக்ட் வந்து டூ தௌசண்ட் டென்ல அதில் கீழே அந்த அந்த ரைட் டு எஜுகேஷன் புக்கில் இருக்கு உங்களோட அந்த தமிழ்நாடு ஸ்டேட் புக்கில் ஃபண்டமெண்டல் டியூட்டிஸில் அந்த பதினோரு ஃபண்டமெண்டல் டியூட்டிஸில் லாஸ்ட் ஃபண்டமெண்டல் டியூட்டி எத்தனை பேர் பார்த்தோம் நாம் ஸ்கூல் படிக்கிறப்ப ஆனால் கேள்வி கேட்குறப்ப அப்போ தான் தேடுறோம் இதுதான் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் கேள்வி எப்படி கேட்குறாங்களோ அந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் கொஷின் பேப்பரை நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நான் படிக்கிறப்ப எல்லினோ கேட்டாங்க எனக்கு முன்னாடி இருந்தப்ப என்னோடய சீனியருக்கும் எல்லினோ கேட்டார் அவர் என்னோடய மென்டாக இருந்து எனக்கு எல்லினோ எடுத்தார் இப்போ இந்தியன் ஃபாரின் சவுசில் இருக்கார் ஸ்ரீதரன் அவர் சொன்னார் எல்லினோ நாங்கள் இருக்கிறப்பவும் கேட்டாங்க உங்கள் பீரியட்லையும் கேட்பாங்க உங்கள் பீரியட்லையும் கேட்பாங்க எல்லினோ இஃப் சப்போஸ் ஹேப்னிங் கிளைமேட்டிக் வெதர் சேஞ்சில் அது கிளைமேட் குளோபல் வெதர் வெதர் சேஞ்சில் இந்த எல்லினோ ஃபினாமினன் லாயினோ ஃபினாமினன் அது கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸில் இருக்கிறது தான் இருக்க தான் செய்யும் ஸோ ஐ டோன்ட் ஐ ஷுட் நாட் திங்க் இட்ஸ் அ கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் இட்ஸ் அகேன் பீங் ஆஸ்ட் அந்த வருஷம் நடக்கிறப்ப அது கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸாக இருக்குது ஆனால் அதுக்கு பேசிக் நாலேஜ் இது பெருவில் அது வெஸ்டர்ன் கோஸ்ட்டில் இருக்கிற ஒரு கோல்டு கரண்ட் எப்படி வார்ம் கரண்ட்டாக ஆகுதுன்னு நான் போய் கோச்சன் லியாங்லையோ இல்லைனா என்சிஆர்டி புக்கில் ஜாகிரஃபியில் படிக்கிறப்ப அந்த ஓஷன் கரண்ட்டை வார்ம் ஓஷன் கரண்ட்டு இல்லைனா வந்து அது அது வந்து கோல்டு ஓஷன் கரண்ட்டு அப்படி தெரிஞ்சுட்டு இந்த கோல்டு ஏன் வார்ம் ஆகுது இந்த வருஷம் ஏன் வார்ம் ஆச்சு அது என்ன இம்பேக்ட் இந்தியன் மான்சூன் மேலே அப்படின்றது இந்தியன் மான்சூன் மேலே அதான் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் தட்ஸ் வாட் ஈவன் ஸ்டான்லி ஜானி வாஸ் ஆஸ்கிங் ஈ வாஸ் டெலிங் அபவுட் இன்டர்நேஷனல் பைக்கில் வாட் இஸ் இம்பேக்டிங் இந்தியா what is impacting india the global affairs impacting india united nations is impacting india G- g20 is impacting india india's leadership so this is what your material perception all about it it is not that manapada manni opikra and the idu illa how you have understood the knowledge the basic knowledge and the anj knowledge sonnala and the anj knowledge um current affairs oda inor angle um update panni vechikittingna neenga padikira 100 kelvi illa neenga 100 kelvi illa 100 kelvi la yaarkume 100 questions ku answer theriy porudhu illa யாராவது ஒருத்தருக்கு சார் சொன்ன மாதிரி லெஸ் தேன் ஃபிஃப்டி தான் இருக்குது கட் ஆஃபே லெஸ் தேன் ஃபிஃப்டி பர்சன்டேஜ் ஐம் டெலிங் யூ இட்ஸ் நாட் அ கிரேட் கட் ஆஃப் ஆல் இண்டியா டாப்பர் ஆகிறதுக்கு உங்களுக்கு ஐம்பது பர்சன்டேஜ் டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் மார்க்கில் ஆயிரம் மார்க்கு கீழே தான் அவர் சொல்கிற கட் ஆஃப் இருந்தது யாராவது கவுன்சிங்கில் அது எவ்வளோ வேகன்சி ஒன்றா இருக்குது நான் இருக்கிறப்ப முந்நூறு வேகன்சி த லோயஸ்ட் வேகன்சி டஃபஸ்ட் போர்ட் ஐ ஹேட் பட் என்னோடய பாதரேஷன் என்ன தெரியுமா எனக்கு தேவை ஒரு வேலை தான் அதுதான் என்னோடய டார்கெட் ஸோ ஃபார் தேட் ஐ வாஸ் ப்ரிப்பேரிங் நீ என்ன ஒன்றா கேட்டுக்கோ ஆனால் என்னோடய நாலேஜாக நான் எப்படி எக்ஸாமினேஷனில் அந்த டூ ஹவர்ஸில் இவ்வளோ நாள் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணது அப்ளை பண்ணு வரப்ப நான் படிக்கணுன்ற அவசியம் இல்லை சுற்றி இருக்கிறத
முப்பது கேள்வி தெரிஞ்சா போதும் அந்த முப்பது கேள்வி உங்களுக்கு ஆன்சர் தெரிஞ்சதுன்னா உங்களுக்கு தெரிஞ்சதுன்னா மிச்சம் இருக்கிற அந்த எழுபது கேள்வியை நீங்கள் எப்படி மேனேஜ் பண்ணுறீங்க அப்படின்றது தான் உங்களோட ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் இட்ஸ் நாட் அட் அ பெரிய பெரிய இட்ஸ் அகேன் அ பிக் சேலஞ்சு ஸோ ரிமெம்பர் த மெட்டீரியல் த கோச்சிங் த மென்டரிங் வாட் எவர் சார் வாஸ் ஸ்டேட்டிங் ஈவன் ஏர்லியர் தி ரிஸ் ஆர் த ஸ்பீக்கர்ஸ் ஸோ மெட்டீரியல் கோச்சிங் மென்டரிங் உங்களோட ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் பிகாஸ் யூ ஆர் ப்ரிப்பேரிங் இட்ஸ் லைக் நான் இது பேசிக்காக எப்படி சொல்லுவேன்னா எங்கள் வீட்டில் எங்கள் அம்மா வந்து ரேஷனில் அரிசி வாங்கிட்டு வர சொன்னாங்கன்னா அரிசி வாங்கிட்டு வரப்போ அவங்களுக்கு தெரியும் அளவு கம்மியாக இருக்குது அதிகமாக இருக்குன்னு அதை ஊற வச்சு புடச்சி அதை காய வச்சு அதை மாவை இதில் போய் அரைச்சி மாவு அரைச்சி எடுத்து வரப்போ அவங்களுக்கு தெரியும் அந்த அந்த மாவு அரைச்சோம் எவ்வளோ மாறிச்சோம் மாவை பிடிச்சிக்கிட்டான் அப்படின்னு பிடிச்சி அடைச்சி அதுக்கப்புறம் அதை அதை பேட்டரை ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணி அதை ஃபெர்மெண்ட் பண்ணி ஃபெர்மெண்ட் பண்ணி இட்லி போட்டதுக்கப்புறம் இட்லி வந்ததுக்கப்புறம் அது சாஃப்டாக இருக்கா எனக்கு கேட்பேன் ஏமா இட்லி கல் மாதிரி இருக்குது அப்படின்னு அப்படியே என்னடா புளிக்கல சரியாக புளிக்கல அப்படின்னு ஃபெர்மெண்ட் ஆகி சாப்பிட்ற வரைக்கும் நம்மளோட ரிசல்ட் இல்லை சாப்பிட்டு சாப்பிட்றது இட்ஸ் நாட் அன் இன்டென்ஷன் த நாலேஜ் வாட் யூ ஹவ் ஈட்டன் இஸ் நாட் தட் இட்ஸ் நோ வாட் யூ ஹவ் கன்சியூம்டில் நான் சாப்பிட்டதுக்கப்புறம் சாப்பிட்டு இட்லி சாப்பிட்டு படுத்து தூங்குறேன்னா பொங்கல் சாப்பிட்டு படுத்து தூங்குறேன்னா சாப்பிட்டதுக்கப்புறம் என்னோட கேலரி எப்படி யூட்டிலைஸ் பண்ணுறேன்றது தான் சாப்பிட்றதோட பர்பஸ் உங்களோட ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் எல்லாமே மெட்டீரியலாக இருக்கட்டும் கோச்சிங்காக இருக்கட்டும் மென்டரிங்காக இருக்கட்டும் இந்த எக்ஸாமை கிளியர் பண்ணுறதுக்கான உங்களோட பர்சனாலிட்டியை நீங்கள் எப்படி ப்ரிப்பேர்டாக வச்சுருக்கீங்க எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூவில் அந்த மொமெண்ட் ஈச் அண்ட் எவ்ரி செகண்ட் உங்களுக்கு கான்சியஸ்னஸ் இருந்ததுன்னா நீங்கள் படிக்கிறது எல்லாத்தையும் எப்படி பயன்படுத்துவீங்க அப்படின்றத அந்த ஆட்டிடியூடோடு உக்காருவீங்க நான் ஒரு டைம் கூட ஒரு டைம் கூட நான் உக்காடுறப்ப இது கேட்பாங்களா கேட்க மாட்டாங்களா அப்படின்னு பார்க்க மாட்டேன் எப்படி கேட்டிருக்காங்க ஏன் கேட்டிருக்காங்க எதுக்காக கேட்டிருக்காங்க எப்போ கேட்டிருக்காங்க என்ன கான்டெக்ட்ஸில் கேட்டிருக்காங்க இந்த இடத்துல கேட்குறப்ப அவரோட இன்டென்ஷன் என்ன இந்த நாலு கேள்வியும் நாலு கேள்வியில் அந்த ஒரு கேள்விக்கு நாலு ஆப்ஷனு அந்த ஆப்ஷனும் ஏன் அவங்க ராங்காக செட் பண்ணுறதுக்கான சாய்ஸ் ஆஃப் வேர்ட்ஸ் எங்கேருந்து எடுத்தாங்க அப்படின்றதையும் தேடுவேன் ஏன்னா எனக்கு ரைட் ஆன்சர் தெரியறது ரொம்ப முக்கியம் அப்படின்னு வரப்ப ராங் ஆன்சர்ஸோட சாய்ஸும் அந்த அந்த பேப்பர் சென்டர் செட் பண்ணுறவருக்கு எங்கே அப்படின்னு தெரிஞ்சால் மட்டும்தான் நான் ரைட் ஆன்சர் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் பண்ணுறதுக்கான ஆட்டிடியூடே ஓரியன்டேஷனு அதனால தான் என்னால் இந்த எக்ஸாமினேஷனை கோச்சிங் போகாமல் போகாமல் கூட என்கிட்ட கிடைச்ச மெட்டீரியலில் எது எனக்கு தெரியும் அதை மட்டும் அதை அதை மட்டும் உள்வாங்கி அதை வெளிப்படுத்துறதுக்கான ஆட்டிடியூடாக டெவலப் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் மெட்டீரியல் இட்ஸ் நாட் த மெட்டீரியல் it's about how you carry the material how you trying to trying to get it processed and uh, getting it prepared prepared at a preparation using it for the prelims 2 hours kulla 3 hours kulla and 20 minutes kulla moonu time use pandrathukana utility aarambikkira pa ungalku irundha da idu material la unga kai la irukiradha neenga effect va use pannuvinga so ncert is sufficient for basic knowledge for standard knowledge you can go for a standard author for current affairs again updated you can see either the related ministry or the newspaper standard newspaper like the hindu which will gives you a lot of information and the report varappa avanga nichayama adha patti ezhudirpaanga appo adha collect panni avangale highlight panirpaanga in the report la exceptions la avanga exceptions highlight pandradha newspaper oda vela routine highlight pandradilla avanga exceptions highlight pandrappa and the exceptions ku whatever the reporting the subjectivity how india exceeded or how india excelled abindra and the subjectivity neenga therinju vechikidinga interview la payan padathirappa அந்த மெட்டீரியலும் உங்களுக்கு பயன்படும் லாங் டேர்மில் இல்லைனா இந்த வருஷத்தோட கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் இந்த வருஷத்தோட ஏர் கட்டியிருப்பேன் தேங்க்யூ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் தேங்க்ஸ் ஃபார் தி ஆர்கனைசிங் சச் அ ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் ப்ரோக்ராம் தேங்க்ஸ் டு வெரண்டா ஐஏஸ் அண்ட் தி ஹிண்டு அண்ட் தேங்க்ஸ் ஆல் தி டிக்னிட்டிஸ் ஆன் தி டாய்ஸ் மை கொஸ்டின் இஸ் ஐ ஹாவ் டூ கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் த ரீசன் பிஹைண்ட் டிக்ரீஸ் இன் கிளியரிங் ஆஃப் தி யூபிஎஸ்சி எக்ஸாம் ஃப்ரம் தி தமிழ்நாடு Tamil Nadu students and how can we increase the numbers in upcoming years in, of course if, if the each aspirant thinks to clear the exam we can increase it but uh, I must uh, I'm asking the holistic reason why is it only from Tamil Nadu the number is decreasing and the second question is that when we start preparing in the month of uh, june july we have a high motivation but when we reach to february march we get a sort of fear and doubt in ourselves whether i have to clear this i have to give this attempt or not or should i withdraw or uh, would i be able to clear this exam we have that doubt so how to how to be confident and face the exam the first question uh, dr sendamurai kannan ips sir yeah and the second question can be answered by sagaya mai 
It's a million dollar question. Why South, especially Tamil Nadu, is not faring well? Everyone knows about it. There can be many reasons. We cannot specifically say that this is the reason. One thing I, uh, what I perceive is that uh, there was more orientation for science and medical science uh, opportunities where we pursue more for neat examination for medical tests. So law, most of the students first opt for these options. And then when they don't get to into this, they finish their uh, professional degrees and then try to step into the competitive examinations. Whereas in North, uh, we find in even getting admission to a graduate program in JNU or a Sri Ram or Hindu college, it's very difficult. It's like getting into IIT. Because in all those graduate programs, mostly in North India, the student starts preparing for the examination right from the degree class, uh, degree one, first day itself. So they choose their options. For example, they want political science, they choose a political science. Lady Hardinji College, everywhere they find, they choose the option with the intention to do civil service alone. That I find because I would be, I was, I did my schooling in Delhi. They are very clear that they, because there is no other opportunities, not much of a, a openings in other fields. So government job and particularly those who are in like upper cream, they want to get into civil services. And because many of their relatives have gone into that, they have got the catch and they have got the maximum number of mushroom number of uh, training academies uh, in Delhi and around areas. And moreover, now they are very specialized. Right from the day one, what they do is sociology, they want to choose for option. They choose it in the first year itself, the degree subject. And the three years, they prepare for only that option. So that is the kind of focus I find in North India. The second one is number of material availability is high in there because a lot of students go from all over India to uh, Delhi, we find a lot of materials being available in Delhi and uh, surrounding areas. And third one is, in Tamil Nadu, we prepare for prelims first. Then once we get through prelims, that itself is the biggest task. Then we think about main. While preparing for prelims itself, we don't think about main at all. But there it is not so. The preparation starts for prelims main simultaneously. That is what I also interacted with the students there. They prepare for both together. Not for interview, but this thing. Moreover, they don't stick out a particular institute for something. For example, prelims, they go to institute. They take the material. For mains, they go to a different institute according to their option. Not all institute gives uh, specialization in all the options. For example, Pune, there's a, they go for uh, uh, anthropology. Uh, Hyderabad, they go for uh, political science. There are some pockets where there are powerful teachers who are uh, come out of uh, the main uh, teaching uh, academies of Delhi, have started their own option subjects. So students now hop on to the options according to their specialization. So they go into more, you know, uh, micro-programming. They study those uh, subjects in detail in the area where it is more popular. Next one. Third one is, the students in the North, they take a lot of examinations. They don't stick on to uh, uh, IAS examinations, stay there, no. They take IIT, they take IAM, they take, uh, you call any examination, probation officer examination, bank examination, uh, RRB, railways, whatever comes as a degree qualification, they take that examination. So that uh, preparation, you know, the, the Tabi Sunare, the Bayong Kurukade, and the Bayong Ille, Yeda, Yedu and Alu Podono, apply Bernet Air No, first group on group four Kacha Pravala, confidence Kurde, group three category, confidence Kurde, group one category, confidence Kurde. So that is what, see, you, do, you don't have to uh, fear of failure. The fear of failure should not be there. Adur Karnanik and Amapasan on the Jasi Pandal Kade, the competitive spirit is also not high. Summa, you know, Varda, Padigra, Varda. Out of our way, Padigra, not serious of Padigra, Rumba Kami. Thirty hours, fourteen hours, focused of Padigra, Rumba Rumba Kami. That is one reason why we have that spirit is not there. 
காம்படிட்டிவ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் போகணுங்கிற அந்த ஸ்பிரிட் வந்து ரொம்ப கம்மியாக இருக்கு ஐம் சாரி டு சே இந்த அப்சர்வேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் லைக் திஸ் அண்ட் மோர் ஓவர் சார் சொன்ன பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் கரெக்ட் தட் என்சிஆர்டி புக்ஸை படிக்கிறாங்க மோர் ஓவர் அங்கே ஒரு இன்னொரு ஹேபிட் நான் என்ன பார்த்துருக்கேன்னா தே கலெக்ட் ஆல் தி பப்ளிகேஷன் டிவிஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் இந்தியா டூ ஃபிஃப்டி த்ரீ அப்புறம் அந்த மெயின் ஸ்ட்ரீமு ஆல் த பப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் கவர்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் இந்தியா எல்லாத்தையும் வாங்கிடுறாங்க லேட்டஸ்ட்டை வாங்கிடுறாங்க வாங்கி எங்கெங்கெல்லாம் ஸ்ட்ராட்டிக்ஸ் கோட் பண்ணுவோம் தே டேக் தட் பேப்பர் தே கிரியேட் தட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் எங்கெல்லாம் ஆத்தோட்டிக் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் தேவையோ கவர்மெண்ட் டேட்டா எடுத்துக்கிறாங்க ஸோ தட் இஸ் ஒன் ஏரியா தி டூ செகண்ட்லி தே டோன்ட் ஸ்டிக் ஆன் டு பர்டிகுலர் மெட்டீரியல் நீங்கள் சொன்ன மாதிரி மெட்டீரியல் தே ஹேவ் தேஸ் இந்த ஸ்ட்ரீட்ஸில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நான் கரோல் பார்க்கல ரோட்டில் ஃபுல்லாக எல்லா கொஷின் பேப்பர்ஸும் விற்கிறான் ஆல் தி இயர்ஸ் சிவில் சர்வீஸ் பேப்பர்ஸ் வேரட்டி ஃபார் ஐஆர்எஸ் இன்ஜினியரிங் சர்வீஸ் எல்லாம் பேப்பர் கொஷின் பேப்பர்ஸ் சோல்டு இந்த மா இந்த பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் அது ஒன்று தே ஆல்சோ செல் தி பெஸ்ட் ஆன்சர்ஸ் இங் கரெக்ட் பண்ண ஆன்சர்ஸ் யாரும் நல்லா டாப் பண்ணியிருக்காங்களோ அந்த ஆன்சர் காப்பி அந்த டீட்டெயில்டு எஸ்ஐஸோட ஆன்சர் ஹவு தே ஹேவ் ஃபேட் இந்த எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஹவு தேர் விட்டன் இந்த ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் எப்படி இருக்குதுன்னு பார்க்குறாங்க அது ஒரு காரணம் ஸோ தே ஆர் ஹேவிங் தி you know the urge to get more and more materials and they take the uh, drawing sheet paper a cut panite avan card mari vechikittu enna seiranga over topic ku and the card la eludranga for example ed sastram ellino na ellino pathi nikku enna vandirukke innikku paper la enna vandirukke adukku munnaadi the history na indha book la nalla irukku purinjal purinjal vechi indha book la nalla kuduthirukka tamil la epdi irukka ellathu vechi vechi இந்த இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் ஃபுல்லாக இந்த கிளிக்கு அடுக்கிற மாதிரி ஒவ்வொரு காடாக அடுக்கி கா காலோட கலர் மாற்றி மாற்றி வச்சு ஃபார் எவ்ரி சப்ஜெக்ட் இன் ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் டாப்பிக்கு அவங்க பண்டல் பண்டலாக போட்டு போட்டு வச்சுருக்காங்க லாஸ்ட்டில் வந்து ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணும்போது எல்லாமே புக்கை தொட மாட்டாங்க அவங்க கலெக்ட் பண்ண மெட்டீரியல்ஸை வச்சுக்கிட்டு தே பர்ஃப் தே மேக் தியர் ஓன் எஸ்ஐ கோ எஸ்ஐஸ் நூறு ஒரு இருபது இருபத்தஞ்சி எஸ்ஐ ஃபார்ம் பண்ணி தட்டிடுறான் ஃபுல்லாக ஒரு இப்போ எக்ஸாம்பிள் சார் சொன்ன மாதிரி யுக்ரைன் இஷ்யூனால் அதை ஒரு நல்ல ஒரு எஸ்ஏ ட்ராஃப்ட் பண்ணி நல்லா தட்டிடுறான் எப்படி கேட்டாலும் அதில் வந்து ஒரு ஒரு பேராகிராஃப் எடுத்தாலும் அந்த ஃப்ளோ ஒன்று டைம் வேஸ்ட் ஆகாமல் அதை எழுத முடியுது ஸோ தே ப்ரிப்பேர் வெல் தட்ஸ் மை பாயிண்ட் ஸோ நீங்களும் அது மாதிரி யூ ஹேவ் டு ஹேவ் ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் யுர் ஓன் யுர் ஓன் கார்ட் மேக்கிங் கலெக்டிவ் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் எல்லா மெட்டீரியலும் நேரத்தில் கிடைக்காது பட் எந்த மெட்டீரியல் ஃபீல் இஸ் குட் கண்டென்ட் இஸ் குட் யூ டேக் தட் ரைட் டவுன் இன் யுவர் Oh, no. the habit of writing kedaiyadu that's one problem i find here in our students they don't write at all or naalige eludhi paalano eludhi paapo kedai paathu padichu vechikala exam poi eludhikala no your problem lies in putting what you know ungal enna theriyudho eludhi theriyamaatigudhu rendavathu eludhi therinjadha tithe kulla theriyadhu what to write how much to write sir sir what to write how much to write ella ivlo theriyum and the question பட் அவங்க கேட்டிருக்க டைமுக்கும் அவங்க எதிர்பார்த்துருக்கும் அந்த கிராஸ்டை மட்டும் எழுதணும் தட் இஸ் வேர் வி ஃபெயில் ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் தி மைன்யூட் டீட்டெயில்ஸ் வேர் ஐ ஃபைண்ட் அவர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ஃபீலிங் தே டு நாட் நோ த நுவான்சஸ் ஆஃப் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் இன் தி டீட்டெயில்டு எஸ்ஏ ரைட்டிங்ஸ் ஸோ ஃபார் தட் இட் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அண்ட் செகண்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் வேர் வி ஃபெயில் இஸ் சார் சார் நம்ம சீசாட் த ஆப்டிடியூட் டெஸ்ட் இந்த எத்திக்ஸ் எல்லாம் கொஞ்சம் புதுசாக தெரியுது இதில் வந்து ப்ராக்டிஸ் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன் கேட் எக்ஸாமில் நடக்கக்கூடிய என்ட்ரன்ஸ் எழுதி பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதே ப்ராக்டிஸ் பண்ணும்போது உங்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய லாஜிக்கல் டெஸ்ட் ஈஸியாக தெரியும் ஸோ ட்ரை டு நமக்கு இதுதான் படிக்கணும் வேறு எதுவும் எக்ஸாம் எழுதக்கூடாதுன்னு நினைக்காதீங்க ஈவன் இஃப் ஆர் நாட் எலிஜிபிள் ஃபார் கேட் நாட் எலிஜிபிள் ஃபார் எனி எக்ஸாமினேஷன் யூ கேன் ரைட் இட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் யூ மே நாட் கெட் எ பாஸ் ரூல் பட் யூ நோ வேர் இஸ் ஸ்டாண்ட் ஸோ அந்த எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ரைட்டிங் ஹேபிட் வந்து உங்களுக்கு வரணும் அப்போ தான் யூ நோ வேர் இஸ் ஸ்டாண்ட் your question uh, is <clears throat> how to stay motivated to the last stage of this war that is the reason veranda is offering residential coaching program to ensure that you stay motivated to the last stage of war you should understand this is a three stages battle this war has got three stages battle and you have to stay motivated to the last stage of this war and for this you need to have innate desire someone has innate and inner desire or dream 
he will remain motivated to the last just because somebody has asked me to appear for the examination i have come and you know, joined a coaching center then he will have problem your desire and dream is innate it's your own desire then you will remain motivated to the last stage of this examination as uh, uh, you know i have uh, i have met a girl uh, uh, 3 years ago dharmana shri in fact she appeared uh, the first time and uh, she, she couldn't crack second time she couldn't uh, crack the third time also she was not able to clear but she remained motivated till you know the fourth attempt in fact she was able to crack civil service examination and become an ias officer now she is serving in kerala so i am again i am saying that your desire should be innate just because your father says just because your mother says that without you know interest or desire if you come and join then it becomes a problem and someone has truly desire and dream he will remain motivated to the last and one more thing you know 2014 era single she topped the civil service examination in fact she stood first she is basically a physically challenged candidate she had many many difficulties she was able to overcome all the difficulties at the end she was able to crack the civil service examination in fact uh, uh, she topped the examination so stood first and i think that similar similar difficulties we don't have and therefore i am asking my you know friend uh, to develop that you know dream or desire number one create a positive environment you have you know your own, you have friends who are positive in their attitude and approach don't have uh, uh, friends you know who have a negative attitude and approach around and as uh, kataria who topped 2018 uh, civil service examination he says have entertainment in the middle that will sometimes you know, keep you motivated to the last and therefore i am asking you know people you know the candidates to have inner desire strong desire and dream to become an ias officer and that will cause greater changes today you are a candidate once you crack there is a greater changes that will occur in your life you become a, an ias officer or ips officer you will become asp or sub collector and you will you will man in the subdivision that is not something you know see ordinary not everyone will get you imagine the social status that you are going to secure after you are cracking imagine that you will be respected uh, so much by your friends by your relatives by your village or you know the town or the people they visualize i think that you will remain motivated to the last stage of this war thank you i am thankful to former ias officer yu sagayam ips officer sandamari kannan irs officer nandakumar and the hindu international affairs editor dr stanley johnny for sharing their thoughts with us thank you